I'm Christopher Hampton, I'm the translator of Judgment Day by Erwin von Horvath. Horvath was born, he was Hungarian, uh, he was born in, uh, in what is now Croatia, um, but at that point was um, I think part of Italy, um, in 1901. His father was a diplomat who eventually wound up in, in Germany. Uh, Horvath didn't write, he said he wrote his first German sentence when he was 14, so he wasn't brought up as a German-speaking writer, but he had a wonderful ear for people's, uh, particularly people's sort of um, paraphrases or pomposity or uh, trying or euphemism. Um, he was very much a, 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 you would say, a realistic writer, except that his plays always have a slightly strange and otherworldly air about them. Uh, I first came across Horvath when I was asked to translate a play called Tales from the Vienna Woods, which is in the very first season at the Olivier Theatre uh, when, when the National opened on the South Bank. Um, and it um, was something of a triumph. I mean, it was a, the kind of um, production you don't see very often now. It's about 40 in the cast and a live orchestra. Um, so it was a great evening, directed by Maximilian Schell. Um, <clears throat> and it was, a, it was one of the successes of the first season at the National. Through all this, I got very interested in, in Horvath, who had, in any case, been a, um, a name that I'd heard a lot when I'd been working in Germany in the, in the early 70s, because his plays had just been really rediscovered at that point and were <clears throat> extremely influential on all, uh, I guess, the writers my age, in, uh, the, the young writers in, um, in Germany at the time. Um, they, they were reacting against what they took to be, I guess, the um, uh, rather black and white um, uh, uh, propositions of Brecht, and they were more interested in somebody um, a bit off the wall, like, like Horvath. Um, I, I wrote a play called Tell Some Hollywood, in which he was the central character um, in the 80s, but since then I haven't really had anything to do with Horvath, and um, these um, two pieces, by which I mean Judgment Day, and a novel of his called Youth Without God, which I've adapted also this year for the um, for a theatre in Vienna called the Theater in der Josefstadt, both written in that period of time between the, the, when the Nazis came to power in 1933 and Horvath's death in 1938, and um, he was one of the only writers who stayed in Germany through that period. Most of the writers just, uh, you know, those who didn't support the regime, um, who, you know, by, by definition were no good. Uh, um, uh, most of the writers uh, left Germany as soon as, as soon as the Nazis came to power, but Horvath was somehow fascinated by what it would be like um, you know, in the country, what daily life would be like under the Nazis. So he went back into Germany and um, spent uh, the best part of five, the next five years there um, and wrote about Nazi Germany from the inside. Now this didn't come without a cost. I mean, he, he, um, he had to join the Nazi Writers' Union, for example. He was acutely aware of, you know, having to compromise all the time with a, a regime that he absolutely detested. And so um, I think he felt a great deal of sort of uncertainty and guilt about the decision that he'd taken to, to stay in Germany. And so both these pieces, Judgment Day and um, Youth Without God, are about a, a feature of a protagonist who is um, suffering the consequences of having told a lie uh, and m trying to make the decision to tell the truth. Like Shakespeare, Towards the end of his life, Horvath started adding supernatural elements to his, um, to his plays and novels, and this is no exception.